In the last video, we now load the print actions from the database, but we don't actually do any adding, updating, or deleting. So if we edit these, add them, save them, delete them, nothing happens. Let's try and implement those features now. So I think let's start with the data service, is it database service? Where are we? Services database service. So in here, let's just add all the features we need that we know we're gonna to have to do instead of trying to bounce around and implement one at a time. Let's just implement all these in one go first. The database side is pretty simple, so it's not gonna be that hard either. You can see we have the add printer settings here, but this is already starting to get cluttered as a single service. So let's just first wrap these in some regions uh, just to try and keep this nice and clean. So we'll keep the life cycle there. We'll then wrap each of these. So this will be like settings. This one will be print settings. Oh, and we got the get, I missed that. And then this one is the print list. And we might as well do this as well migrations and then if you wanted to fully wrap the class we might as well put this one in members and now that's all tidy we want to go into print settings so we have the get print settings we've got add print settings which i wasn't sure whether we had or not maybe we added that at the last minute which is actually wrong as well we don't call it but we're actually adding the print item this print list here not the print settings, so that's actually wrong anyway. That will want to be print settings and print settings. And now we need the update and delete to this function. So we just copy and paste and then change this to update. And then what we want to do is first check if we have the item. The simplest way I think to update these items, especially with it being a small amount, is to simply delete the existing item and re-add it. What you'll find is trying to update and marry up properties and set them all independently unless you're trying to keep some state in the database so it's larger i just find it much easier to delete and re-add so all we'll do is say if existing item equals underscore context dot print settings and we don't want the intellisense find that will search the local database entries first in memory we want to do first or default and look for the id and now simply, if we have an existing item, so it's not null, we want to then remove it. So we'll do context.printsettings.remove, and then we can just call add print settings after, and that will do the save at the same time. We could say remove existing, add new. And then because we need a remove call as well, a delete, this will change to delete in a moment. So we'll just copy and paste that again. Change this to delete print settings, and this will be exactly this. And we're not going to error out if we don't have it. We're simply going to ignore if we don't have it. So I suppose you could actually say invert the logic here. If it's null, return. Otherwise, you remove and save changes. So that's the delete done. And then this update is literally a case of remove print settings or delete print settings and then add new. So you can see the update is just a combination of delete and add. We want to do that now for uh, the print list as well. So we've got the get, like we've got the gets here, and then we need the add, the updates and the deletes. And to be honest, we can pretty much just copy all of them. So we just copy all these, go into the print list, paste in and then we just copy this and make sure all of these are the right type and then we can rename it to print list instead of print settings or in fact add print item it should be not add print list or print list item yeah that's what it should be actually print list item and then this will be delete print list item that will now use the delete and add. 
this now needs to change to the actions tab print and so does the delete and everything else stays the same so that should be all the database side taken care of so we don't have to keep bouncing back to this now so next let's go to the ui which will be the actions tab and what we want here is i don't believe we even have anything linked on the save button that appears when we change so if we check this and check here we don't have anything linked to the save button at the minute so if we just search for save you can see here we've got nothing linked so we're going to do a command binding and we'll link it to how we have a cancel print item we will then do an add or save rather print item command and now we need to go and make that actual call and that will be in the actions page view model it's the top level that has these calls there we've got fetch fetch delete and there we go we've got a cancel print item so i'm just going to make a new one here private async task save print item async this is a relay command and now in here if we let's just do a check that we have something selected or not so ignore give no selection that's just in case the ui glitches and somehow we have a save button without a selected item so we'll just do a plain uh, ignore basically after that we have two options so one is when we've made a brand new item so we've clicked new print and then we need to save it and basically create a brand new one and the other one's update now in theory at the minute if we looked at our service for the database, you wouldn't even need an add and an update separately. So if we go to, uh, that's the wrong place, database service, we go to these and say you've got the add, which does adding. You've got the update, which deletes if it exists and ignores otherwise and then adds. So you could just use a single update, like add or update. But we'll keep the logic separate in case in future we want to log events or do something different when we're updating versus adding. So in here, what we want to do is check if we are, uh, if the selected item is new. So a selected item uh, is new item. And then we want to do a database service dot add print list item. And that will be the selected print list item that we now need to convert to a data model. So we haven't done that yet. We'll have to make a to data model method. Let's just create a dummy for that in here and that's what we'll do in a moment otherwise this is an existing item and we are going to do update print list item and then finally because once we've saved we haven't fetched anything back here we've commit to the database and typically what we do is pull back the result in case things change like the id is being set and then update the ui so update this item with the return value of what comes from this uh, we could do that but considering at the minute i know that when we add them and update them they're exactly the same and we already have ids because when we create a new item we set the id and when we're updating it it's already got it we're going to be slightly lazier here and keep the code simpler so we're just going to flag this new item uh, as not new because we have now updated it to match so that will be the selected print list item dot is new it can't possibly be new now so we'll always set it to false and to remove the save button, remember we have to then update the state as well. So not restore state, but we actually want to set the save state because we've just saved. So what this will do now is go into here, pull the state of the object and set it as the new save state, which should now match. So basically saying the value is committed and this is the new saved state and that will remove the save button. If we didn't do this, then it would continue to show as the save button as if we haven't actually updated and saved. So I think with just that, we can probably test to see if we can edit and add a new item, I think. So we go to actions now, and if we say do a new one and click save. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't do the code. So we've got to now do this to data model, which means converting the view model into a data model. And that's quite simple. We will just do an inline new to return a new item. And then here we just literally copy every value over. So ID equals ID. Tally census failed there miserably. Description equals description and so on. 
and that's then all the values we need and now hopefully this works and we can actually add and update values so if we go again go to actions click new save and no still a problem foreign key constraint failed uh why what have we missed id is id oh printer settings id equals zero and printer settings is not so we've ah we've set the id to zero somewhere on the new so we need to fix that so in the actions page view model, uh, let's look for new print, is it? New add new print item. There we go. So this is the issue. We we were obviously making an ID up here. Uh, but this is setting it to say it's actually linked to a printer settings that now we have in the database. It needs to link to a real thing. So what we need to do here, how you can see it even says to do. So we want to fetch printer settings and this is going to be var printer settings equals database service dot get printer settings you'll remember those will always have one so we can successfully and confidently do printer settings dot first dot id and that will set it now even though the current logic is this should never not return with one item in if we decided to change this logic we're also going to break this code in here for no reason. So what you could simply do is say first or default is that, and otherwise it's null to then not set it basically. And this is then moaning that's a possible null reference, but that's literally correct. That's what we want. And now it's complaining that it's possible null, but this can be null. So what we probably should do is actually mark this explicitly as nullable because this literally can be null. I suppose then we don't need to do this. And that's the error gone. And now let's probably delete the database just to make sure that we didn't break anything with code. And now it's nullable. I also don't think we need to even do that because this will just return null. So that's cleaner. And let's see when this makes the database if that's actually still happy. The fact that this property now changes to nullable. It should be, but let's just double check. So it can't open the database, which is obvious. And then remake the database. We've got the default items. Add a new one. Save. There we go, so now it's gone off, the button's hidden. And if we go back and in, there's the new item. If we just double check, those entries are in the database now. So we have this one here, there's the new item. So it's added it to the database successfully. So at least you know that bit works. Now, did we implement the delete? I can't remember, I don't think we've linked it yet. No, so we still need to link the delete. See if the edit works. Yep, that seems to have worked and edited the properties as well. So we just need to link the delete in now. Now we already have the delete somewhere in here. So delete print settings, it's not that. Delete print list item, it's gonna be this one, I think. Oh, I'm gonna be in the right place here. I don't know, we're in database service. Let's get to the right place. Uh, delete, there we go. So delete print item from UI, uh, cancel print item. So if we're canceling a print item, Ignore if nothing is selected, if it's new, delete it, otherwise restore the state. So that is fine, it's not the cancel. That's literally when we haven't saved and we don't want to save. Here we go, so this one maybe. And this gets called from here. So delete print settings, delete print profile. Something's odd here. Why have we got delete print settings, which is then deleting print profile? I think something's named wrong here. Let's go into the view delete print so we have delete print item has one command and delete print settings is another so this is on this one here so delete print settings is correct if we delete that but then why do we do delete print profile from ui when we delete a settings that surely isn't right delete print pro ah this is right it's just named wrong so this isn't delete print profile this is delete print settings another naming issue and now we know we want the delete print item so it's this one we want to alter and you can see we've got a to do in here so we can delete this because we are about to do it and then what we have here is delete from ui so instead we want to first check if the user selects to delete because it's literally an option to confirm whether they want to delete or not and in theory we probably want to confirm as opposed to actually delete but we don't really care because if the delete fails, then it's gonna be removed from the UI, but still exists in the database. And they just need to reload the page to fix that. 
So what we want to do is have this return a value so we know whether they cancelled or not. So we'll change this to Boolean. And then if they cancel or if they can't find the item, we didn't do anything. If they select to cancel in the pop-up, we still don't want to do anything. And if it all goes through while we return true. So this is now going to let us know if they actually did remove something from the UI. And so in here now we can say, well, if we did remove something from the UI, now delete it from the database. So if user selected to remove from UI uh, via confirm dialog, uh, then we want to delete from database. And we should already have this call in. So it should be a simple case of delete print list item with an ID, is it? Nope. What did we pass in? The full item. Uh, we probably don't need the full item. We just need the ID. So we'll do string ID. Uh, oh, we actually had that there. So that now is easier. Let's update the other delete to do the same. Uh, if we have another delete, yeah, delete print settings. So string ID. And there we go. There's less requirement to have uh, anything but the ID now. That's it. And now in here, we can pass in the ID. And I think that should be all we need to now do the delete as well. And if that's right, it means we should be able to add, save, go in and out. Now we have two, delete, yes, go in and out, and it's gone. Delete now, and it stays. Edit the item. Yep, that all seems to be now fully working. We've got the new settings, which Still isn't pulling in the actual settings yet. Uh, new, there's a point. If we do, let's say we do a new item and then edit this and save. Yeah, that's still working. Tab out, tab in. Yep, so all we need to do is fix this page now to have these actually loading in, as well as fixing this pop up and adding the same save and delete to this element here. Once we've done that, this entire print page and settings page and then all linked in with the database and get stored correctly. And we can move on to all these other tabs then. These should really flow fast because we've done all of the framework now to be able to just make UI and bind them in really fast. So each of these pages should be pretty smooth and quick to do.